RAF Greenham Common, once on the Cold War front line, now a temporary base for war games. Two years after the Americans have left, one of Britain's most infamous military bases is once again at the center of controversy. This time it's on the issue of whether the Ministry of Defense should be allowed to cash in on Greenham's development potential or whether the base should be restored to Heathland. the control room at uh, Green Common and it's from here that the movements of the cruise missiles were controlled. David Nassif has been commissioned by the Ministry of Defence to find a new future for Greenham Common and its extraordinary range of buildings, a legacy of their fearsome nuclear past. This uh, clearly is where the um, the day-to-day uh, -day movements would have been uh, recorded, all these, uh, all these things slide around with lights behind and so forth. What we've got left is a few relics of what was here several years ago. You know, look secret when filled in, uh, releasable to NATO as a NATO secret. Well, there's not too much on there at the moment. There are various plans and other documents around. Um, maps of... Uh, it's in this control room that American military technicians would have received direct orders from the White House in Washington, and in wartime could have started a sequence of events which would have obliterated half of the then Soviet Union. Constantly being updated, it has a use, I suspect, in the end. It, it um, may well be just sort of left there for posterity. The walls of the control room are two feet thick, and doors and windows are hermetically sealed. This is the chemical warfare decontamination suite. It's part of the control room, and the facility here was where anybody who suffered from some sort of chemical warfare attack could come in from the outside and come into this series of chambers following the arrows on the floor and going through the doors. When we first got involved with this building, we found all sorts of interesting documents around the place. I suppose the most interesting one was the uh, one that was entitled How to Survive a Nuclear Fallout. And this is the area where uh, there are showers shower heads in the ceiling or controlled here. There are few obvious commercial uses for a redundant decontamination unit. Where, um, you it's one of a number of highly specialized military installations at Greenham which continue to tax the sales skills of David Nassif and his team. That's how it works. So you're nearly there, get to this last stage and open the door. Hey presto, you're back into civilization again. Greenham Common is one of some 70 military bases across Britain facing an uncertain future. Many were established as emergency bases during World War II and kept busy during the Cold War. Now they're surplus to requirements. In many parts of Britain they sparked fierce planning rows, none more so than at Greenham Common. While its long-term future is under discussion, the MOD is anxious to exploit the short-term potential. My firm's instructed by the Ministry of Defence to do what we can to raise as much revenue as possible from the buildings and other facilities on the site here whilst the planning debate is going on and to make sure that uh, the rents that are coming in can go some way towards uh, staunching the flow of money going up. The local drum and bugle band pay a peppercorn rent. It's good PR for the military, but it doesn't begin to pay the millions of pounds a year it costs to keep the airbase secure and maintained. In the longer term, the MOD is under orders to make what it can from the base, and unlike many redundant bases in Britain, Greenham Common lends itself to alternative uses. It's a developer's dream. But Greenham contains other less desirable secrets. The empty silos are still on the other side of the fence, 
sealed off from the world as part of the INF agreement signed in 1987, which reduced the world's nuclear arsenal. They've become a no-man's land, open to inspection by the Russians at any time. They'll remain cordoned off into the next century. The giant doors which once protected the missiles from the enemy and from prying eyes now stand permanently open, the means to operate the system long gone. Below the silos are hundreds of yards of underground tunnels and chambers, secure accommodation for the crew's missile launch staff, who in times of emergency would have lived here. The corridors twist and turn through sharp angles designed to reduce the impact of an outside blast. Chambers included control rooms, bedroom accommodation and recreation areas. When the base was operational, this was a secret high security area, totally closed to outsiders. It was never penetrated by the peace women, who frequently forced their way into other areas on the base. Other underground secrets are also coming to light. During its years as an airbase, Greenham housed millions of gallons of aviation fuel in real tanks. The MOD has admitted that at least one of these sprung a leak in December 1991, seriously contaminating the surrounding land and underground water table. The full extent of... There are rumours of other pollution incidents. During its 50 years as an airbase, much of that time leased to the US Air Force, planes would regularly come and go. Nobody knows how rigorous the environmental safeguards were at the time. We know, for example, that... The situation poses a real dilemma for the Ministry of Defence, which says it has no knowledge of any hidden surprises. We have a great many plans um, that have been handed over to us, um, and we have catalogued them, and uh, we, we know much of what is here. Uh, but not everything? Well, it, I, I personally don't, but it'll, it'll be there in the plans. You know, if, if it's in the plans, we have the plans, uh, and the documentation is there for us to look at if we need to look. The MOD has now agreed to furnish Newbury Council with full details of what lies under the base and has made assurances that complete and detailed plans do indeed exist. There are, of course, sir. As uncertainty persists, temporary uses proliferate. It's not just a problem at Greenham Common. There's very little independent information about any of the 70 redundant military bases now up for grabs across Britain. Some are known to be contaminated, many may not be. Nobody outside the MOD knows, and many commentators doubt they know either. Critics say the government is avoiding its responsibilities and failing to face up to the implications of such a massive disposal of military land. In the absence of government action, there's a festering mistrust between local people and the Ministry of Defence. The of peace and war which brought Greenham to national prominence will remain.